Hey there. You're watching The Jessa Channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa, and today I am here with episode two of Kathy Rain. This is a let's play and walkthrough of this 90s focused or set in the 90s adventure game in which Kathy Rain is going to uncover a mystery. Let's get started on that and head right to the sheriff's office. What's the deal with that bum? What bum? The one in the cell. Oh, I thought it was with you. Well, shit. <laughs> okay, this is a good sign. They have no idea who's actually in their cells. Let's talk to the uh, young cop. Looks a bit familiar. Young cop. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Hi. Hello. Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me. In a kind of, but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. I'm just gonna pretend to recognize oh, him. Oh, right. Lenny. Long time no see, buddy. Ain't that the truth. I suppose you came to town for the funeral? Yep, that's right. Sorry for your loss. Joseph was a great guy before, well, you know. Yeah, he really was. So, uh, anyway, what can I do for you today? Let's ask him about this incident that we learned about from Grandma Rain in the last episode, in which... Grandpa Rain, um, was mysteriously found wandering. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Oh, this is going to be really fun. Well, Let's go in here. See ya. <laughs> Let's go in here and knock this guy's coffee cup over. <laughs> that must be the sheriff. He looks grumpy. Yeah, probably is grumpy. <laughs> Lanny, I need you to do Hello, Sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods. That's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. So, police report. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They are official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. Let's see if Lenny will give us a little Lenny, help. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. You want to <laughs> see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Uh, just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Well, we're not getting anywhere with him. Photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a suit. Probably the mayor. <laughs> it's always the mayor. A gold medal of some kind. I was just curious just about this guy. Photo. I can't see it clearly from here. But I guess it's just some photo. So, we need a way to... Lots of police reports organized alphabetically by the looks of it. Get a look at those reports. Have a feeling that Liddy's not going to just allow us to take a peeky. Hey, what's the deal with that bum? What bum? The one. 
Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Hey, I need to see the police report from 81 when my grandfather was found by the old sheriff. I'd love to help, Kathy. The files are right here behind me. But you better check with the sheriff first. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> oh, so not well, gonna do I that. Know. See ya. <laughs> Looks Definitely like not going to do that. Help me get that report. I'll have to take matters into my own hands. As I always. What's behind those doors. I wonder what's behind those doors too. Let's go take a look. Not sure where those doors lead. I should go check it out. How's the paperwork coming along, Lenny? Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. Ah, convenient. Well, you look like you've had a rough morning. Hey. What? I can't hear you. I said... A jail cell. Looks cramped. <laughs> I didn't say that. Hey. <laughs> what? I can't hear you. Okay, well, it turns out that uh, we're going to have to do something about this. Thanks. That was getting annoying. I love his voice. Uh, Dave Gilbert did a great job with the voice actors on this, uh, uh, game. Hey. Hi there. What are you so, in for? Why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. <laughs> to be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. Uncle that Bob. That doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, <laughs> mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I feel I you, brother. I've heard enough, buddy. <laughs> You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. That's always the best time to stop. <laughs> you need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> so, uh, he got played. Do <laughs> Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay then. Let me know when. We'll do. <laughs> Clean floor with mop? Huh, really? Very funny. <laughs> I just wanted to see if she really would have done it. Obviously, the answer is no. <laughs> Evidence lockers. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, well. Think about if evidence. I need to find evidence. I'll know where to look. Look at, think about, I love this a community. Computer monitor. <laughs> Probably recovered stolen goods. There's no way small town cops would be that up to date with the modern world. What I was trying to say before I discovered I had a tongue was computer monitor <laughs> and how big it is. All CRT glory. <laughs> um, what if any of these tools could help too us? Too heavy to carry around, and too noisy to use in here without getting caught. Hmm. Okay, well, looks like we aren't going to be able to just sort of bang it open, which does make sense. Very reasonable. We're in a police station, we snuck into the back. we we'll start beating things, beating metal on metal. That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> okay, exit. <clears throat> it looked like she just went downstairs. That was cute. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, <sighs> oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. Files? Okay, let's have a look. August 16th, 81, 11.40 p.m. Talks about an individual encountered on the uh, side of a dirt road, 
few miles from Conwell Springs, blindly walking forward with his eyes open. This was Joseph Rain. He was fiercely cut, clutching a small tape recorder, complete with tape. Tape recorder was found, discarded, filed as evidence. Well, we need to get our hands on that evidence. Hmm, I'm going to have to get my hands on that recorder. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Now, look innocent. Or at least try to. All right, so we need to get back here again, but I have a feeling we can't just walk back here. We have to wait. To do How can I help us? Now. My mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get her. Thanks, by the way, for that. Let's actually say something to him. Hey. Not just walk by. Hi there. <laughs> okay, and, gotta go. See ya. Oh well, can't thank him. We'll just thank him with our hearts. <laughs> Evidence lockers. So here's where we're going to need to use our locker key. Perfect. All right, got it. Tape recorder, or <laughs> as they say in 1995, dictaphone. <laughs> Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. And that gives us a new journal entry of Attic. This is really neat. You can rewind, fast forward, play. It's pretty cool. You can record. Ooh, maybe we can use this later on to spy on people. That'd be great. Okay, so exit. 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 <laughs> exit, Kathy. I'm double clicking to see if I can move through screens quicker, but uh, it wasn't allowing me to. All right, uh, let's just uh, pretend that we weren't there. Kind of walk hey, on by. Kathy, wait. What? Uh-oh. Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe we can eat the food together? Boy, are you barking up the wrong tree. I'm really busy right <coughs> now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. It is nice that she didn't just go, Oh, God, no. Let's go back to uh, Grandma's. All right. We need to head up to the attic, but I happen to know that we can't just waltz up there. We'll need to be polite and ask Grandma for permission. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Grandma. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Well, a little incident in the attic. Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. Oh, it's cute how she goes downstairs. <laughs> well, let's take a look-see around. Light bulb? The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Oh, so that means that this light switch... Nothing. The bulb must be burned out. Wow. You see how those two came together like that? Fascinating. Um, so... Ah. 
Well, we could go ask for where Grandma keeps her um, light bulbs, or we can just take one. Let's just do that. Free light bulb? Score! That's exactly how I feel about it. All right, in our evidence bag here, we can... Can I just, uh, let's see, I don't want to combine, I just want to, yeah. There we go. The combine makes me think that, you know, combine it with something in the inventory, but that's not the case. Let there be light. Let there be spider webs. Fun little thing here. Mr. Bear, oh, how did you get all the way up there? I was Good very idea. dis- You just keep watch. I'll do the searching. I was very, um, uh, saddened to find out that we could not take Mr. Bear with us. Keep him in our inventory and occasionally, um, excuse me. Excuse me. When, uh, occasionally when Kathy was, uh, uh, just standing idle like this, she would take out Mr. Bear and sing to him. I was really bummed out when that was not the case. Various books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. This book here is not covered with spider webs. A thick book about math. All right, that adds a thick book about math to I'm our inventory. Covered in cobwebs. Once again, you can hold the uh, control key down to see different things. This diagram might be it of looks interest. Like someone was doing geometry. I can't make much sense of it. Or not. Anything up here? No. Can we open these drawers? Nothing. What about these? Empty. All right. Briefcase. This should hold the secrets to a puzzle. Locked briefcase is added to our notebook, and we are unable to lock it without understanding what the... Let's see. One, two... How far did these go? Okay, so we need to find the code. Let's see if the math book gives us any clues. Secrets of Infinite Numbers by Arthur P. Gibson. Fascinating. Yellow bookmark, blue bookmark, red bookmark. That shows us pi. The blue bookmark shows us the Fibonacci numbers. And the prime numbers. So somewhere within this might lie our code. What did that tape recorder say? Note to self, remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I... Three, one, and two. So, the solution to this puzzle is to take the three numbers as it corresponded to the uh, colors. So, <clears throat> you want to match the colors of the flowers with the bookmarks. If you do that and go through, open up each number, you get the following code. Yes! Success! Holding down the space bar doesn't give me anything. It just 
uh, doesn't show me everything that's available, so the only thing that we can take is this. And let's take a look at that right now. Absolutely. Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Oh, the tape. Micro cassette. Can we... micro tape labeled answering machine. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. Okay, well then let's see if I can combine this tape with... Perfect. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Whoa. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm, I wonder who this cocky is. I wonder too, but I also wonder, that must have been um, Sharon, uh, Kathy's mother, the, se the uh, second caller. Okay, well, we have some things to talk about with Mrs. Rain. Let's head downstairs. We need to find out who this cocky is. Oh, hello, dear. <laughs> She's always so happy. Well, to see us, more or less. <laughs> mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. No, it's but that bad. Get back to the subject. You don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. Call sign. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Yeah, I guess not. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Okay, so we have to head to the Air Force. Let's see if this adds anything to our map. Maybe we need to look in the telephone book, but let's find out. Hmm. Nothing new added to the map. I know. <laughs> We're home. <laughs> Probably should have tried the phone book first. <clears throat> okay. Nope, couldn't find it. That's probably no, not. Nothing like that in here. Yeah, I didn't think so. Call sign. Hmm. Well, 
There's a little more here. Let's take a look at these pictures and different things. Maybe we'll find a number in there. Looks overexposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. Grandpa in uniform with two other men. Something is handwritten on the back. Flight training, McConnell Air Force Base, 1941. Okay, so now we might be able to uh, make a call. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. 1975, which is um, some years earlier than Grandpa's um, disappearance and accident. And a small key. It's a small key, fairly modern design. No identifying tag, unfortunately. We will keep that in mind. So now we should be able to make a call. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. That's what I was hoping we could do. <laughs> Let's try closing the inventory first. All right, got it. One, two, six, three. Oh, I see. I'm not sure where that uh, number just went. I don't have anything to say about that. Well, I don't either. <clears throat> Might want to pick up the handle first. <laughs> yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> there we go. That's how it works. Okay, McConnell, I was thinking they're going to make me memorize this number. I hope not. Force Base, how can I help you? Hi, I was just wondering if you had time to answer a few questions. Sure thing, ma'am. Ask away. Uh, I don't think we should just start off with this. Do you recognize the aviator call sign, Cocky? Afraid not, ma'am. I know all the call signs here, and I'm positive it's not one of them. This isn't current, though. It might have been used as early as World War II. Oh. That's unfortunate. We don't keep any official records of call signs. The only option I can think of is to get a hold of somebody who was around back then. Any suggestions? The only person I can think of who is still alive would be Charles Wade. The billionaire? He was stationed at McConnell? He was, up until the point when he founded Wade Industries in the 60s. All right, thanks. My pleasure, ma'am. Anything else I can help you with? Mmm... I don't see why he'd be able to help us with that. Tell me about McConnell Air Force Base. Or maybe he can. It's one of the oldest Air Force bases in the U.S., established during World War I. The main purpose of it is to train fighter pilots. The McConnell Flight School is well-renowned all around the country. In the late 80s, the school started accepting a limited number of civilian applicants due to the high demand. Some of the most famous dogfighters in U.S. history, such as Ethan Fireball Jenkins... Joseph Vigilante Rain ah. and Brett Savior Myers trained at this very base. Charles Wade, the great industrialist, did too. Some claim that many of his revolutionary ideas came from the former chief mechanic here, the late Niles Bloom. Interesting. Thanks for the history lesson. He named our uh, Grandpa Rain. Do you know anything about what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? I know that he was no longer stationed here at the base at that time. He'd left the Air Force decades earlier. But as a Conwell Springs citizen, sure, I've heard the rumors just like everybody else. How he was found by the sheriff all messed up, walking out of the woods with some kind of unexplained brain damage. Any theory as to what he was doing out there? I'm afraid not, ma'am. But I'm positive that it had nothing to do with this base or our operations here. Okay. What can you tell me about his service at McConnell? 
Well, Joseph Rain is a legend around here. His pile of metals weighs more than my car. I was fortunate enough to meet him before he suffered his injury. I'm positive that he would have made general if he'd stuck around. Any idea of why he quit? He looks so happy in the pictures from the war. Oh, your family, ma'am? Granddaughter. Well, then I'm sorry for your loss. I heard about his recent passing. Appreciate it, buddy. So, about him quitting. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but some say the war broke him. PTSD. Me? I don't think so. When I met him, he had this aura about him, like he wasn't afraid of anything. Maybe it was just guilt. He ended a lot of lives, but that's just me speculating. Gotcha. Thanks for the thoughts. Don't know if he would know anything about Drowned Teenage Girl. I don't see a reason to ask him about that. Yeah, I didn't think so. And he's I'm already told us- i to get a hold of Charles Wade. Would you happen to know how to reach him? I'm sorry, ma'am, but Charles Wade is a public figure. He has explicitly asked us not to provide his contact details to anyone. Is there any way you could make an exception? I really need to talk to Mr. Wade. No can do. I can't really help you out unless you have some sort of official business. Oh. Pretend to be a cop. That's probably going to get us in I trouble. I do have official business. I'm Deputy Reagan. I'm calling from Conwell Springs Sheriff's Department. Nice try. You know what caller ID is? You can clearly see that you're not calling from the station. Goodbye. Damn, I can't pull that off if I call from here. So, we need to make a trip to the sheriff's station. Now, <laughs> we can head to the sheriff's station. And we will do that in the next episode of Kathy Rain. This is a let's play and walkthrough of Kathy Rain. I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, please hit the thumbs up button below. And if you're loving it, join the party and subscribe. I'll see you back here for more 1995 goodness in the next episode. And as always, thank you so much for watching.